hey guys uh, welcome back uh, from today onwards i'm going to start a new playlist related to beam forming in 4g and or or 5g okay so before uh, starting this uh, uh, let me take you uh, let me take you through the channel i want to have a tour on my channel uh, so this is my channel and um, and I have got uh, around 19 videos over here. So since there are a lot of videos, I want to just give a gist of what is present, how this is useful to uh, everyone. So I have created a lot of playlists related to uh, industry. So here we have uh, uh, interview questions for telecom industry, probably interview questions. And uh, I will be putting a lot of guidance and interview related uh, queries which I would be getting uh, from many people. Actually, I have got uh, the queries from many people, but I have not updated. There were only three queries. I will try to update in the uh, upcoming videos. Then uh, fixed to flow, flow to conversions uh, or fixed point implementation DSP. There is one series that is helpful for uh, the industry and equalization in 4G or 5G OFDM that is uh, uh, related to um, you know, physical layer concept which is also very much useful then we have this um, PAPR related concepts then modulation demodulation related concepts and related to LO leakage why why we need null sub carriers why there is an off sub carrier shift in uplink those things are covered here so this is multi UV concept I have not started much I will come to that in the uh, near future mm, and then uh, there are some general information which I have updated and, and also I am trying to provide you some general information like uh, uh, you know whether BTEC or MTEC uh, uh, is beneficial like that I will try to bring in more videos uh, here okay so then Related to this OFDM concepts, uh, this is the one which I have completed recently. This is very much uh, uh, important for both uh, uh, for both who are working in industry and who are working in uh, who are uh, you know studying in academia. Okay. So with this, uh, uh, I will move on to the academia related uh, contents. Okay, this will be very much useful for people who are doing uh, uh, MTech or engineering. All right, so there are many gate related short notes I have updated. This will be helpful for the gate preparation or IES preparation, and then uh, you know, uh, even while you are studying various uh, ENC subjects, this will be very much useful. So, then uh, I have started giving some important uh, uh, tricks related to gate, but uh, I have not progressed much in this particular playlist. Then, interview questions it will be helpful for both. Uh, uh, academy and industry guidance as well um, and even uh, and even I would say the uh, general information and tips okay so then apart from that we I mean apart from that I, I have created this academy of wireless communications the one who is studying in mtech or engineering uh, they would be benefited uh, here also I have not progressed much but uh, in soon I will come and uh, try to uh, you know post a lot of videos here so FDM concepts, seven semester students, engineering students, it will help and even for MTech guys. Um, I have given many technical presentations at various campus that is covered over here and uh, even some of the motivational presentations uh, are present over here. Okay. So with this, let me get back to the uh, concept related to beamforming. So please do subscribe to the channel and also if you think you would like to uh, you would like to know some of the concepts uh, please uh, ping me or uh, drop a message to me i will try to see how that uh, concept can be covered a lot of concepts like channel estimation equalization i have covered based on the feedback from many people um, even this beam forming also i would be covering based on the feedback from the many people as we are moving to 5g uh, beam forming has become one of the major uh, important concept uh, uh, where people would be working on so here uh, in this particular video mainly i will spoke about uh, the basic uh, basics of uh, uh, beamforming and, uh, and also uh, some uh, introduction about uh, beamforming in 4g or 5g so uh, let us see in 4g what are the beamforming aspects we had okay so the first main thing is uh, digital beamforming 
so this uh, we were doing as part of a pre coding block in case of 4g okay um, so whenever there is a uh, pre coding enabled then this will be informing used to happen what about analog beamforming? Analog beamforming was not mandatory in case of 4G, but there are some uh, operators where, uh, as a as a part of proprietary algorithms or proprietary implementation or deployment, uh, they used to uh, use this analog beamforming. Okay, so when both of them are exercised, uh, you know we can we can say uh, hybrid beamforming is in action. Okay, so. This is the case in case of 4G. I would say not uh, um, mandate. But uh, let, let's come to 5G. Okay, in case of 5G, um, we are operating with the two frequency brand, band. Okay, one is frequency range one, frequency range two. This is uh, um, uh, in a less than six gigahertz. Okay, whereas uh, this uh, we have uh, uh, we have uh, a higher frequency in the millimeter waves. Okay, let's say 24 gigahertz uh, or 64 gigahertz and things like that. Now, uh, in FR1, whatever uh, uh, the beam forming uh, I just spoke about, uh, those things uh, can be used. Again, in this uh, FR1, analog beam forming is not a mandatory one, but uh, FR2, millimeter waves, the moment we go to millimeter waves, uh, the frequency is very high, right? So as a result to path loss which is directly proportional to frequency that is also very high. So the signal will not travel for a longer distance. That is when uh, it is uh, defined that we need uh, a newer technology uh, as uh, as mandatorily that is analog beamforming. Analog beamforming technology has been introduced uh, in case of 5G especially this will be exercised uh, in the millimeter waves. So we will try to see a lot of concepts related to analog beamforming and digital beamforming, okay? And and even we will see what 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 are the things done in case of hybrid beamforming, okay? I hope uh, uh, you got the uh, high level picture of uh, why we want to talk about the beamforming. Uh, now, um, now let us say the moment we say beamforming, uh, we are talking about uh, uh, RF antenna. Uh, antenna beam right so let's say uh, let's say I have just uh, uh, antenna one antenna so this antenna has got uh, some beam okay Let, let's say that beam is can be written something like this maybe small side lobes uh, can be there okay <clears throat> this um, antenna um, let's say uh, what, what I will do let's say I have got one I will do modulation. Let's say I will do modulation 0, 1, 0, 1, something like that. Then then output of modulation is IQ, IQ sample, right? So let's say it's just a QPSK. Then uh, uh, let's say I have got 0, 0, 0, 0. If I'm mapping, I will get 1 by square root of 2 plus J 1 by square root of 2. Okay, this is the IQ rate, right? complex uh, uh, number. So this, uh, this now, um, you know, we would be converting it into this is in the discrete form, right? The discrete form. So we are we have to convert it into analog form. So there will be a DAC. Uh, then then uh, um, yeah we will be processing this uh, across both high channel and Q channel. Okay, I will not go through the complete circuit tree. But uh, uh, but after DAC we have this uh, local oscillator. Uh, you know with this local oscillator uh, we actually perform the half conversion and uh, and then. You know, let's say the same thing is happening in the Q channel as well. Then here, what do, what do I get is, let's say I will I will represent it as X of T. So X of T is a RF signal uh, and it is a half converted uh, signal. This is not a baseband signal, this is a cross band signal. Okay, this X of T is in time domain and uh, this is analog in nature. This is an RF, right, analog. So this one, maybe this is further given to power amplifier and uh, and it is uh, uh, given to the antenna okay so if uh, it, it is given to only single antenna maybe the side lobes might not be there in the single antenna case but uh, uh, but there is only one main lobe and this uh, this beam is very wide okay very wide um, and this is how let's say this is how the uh, antenna beam uh, beam pattern look like so some of the concepts which i have to talk here is 
from the peak 3 db below if you take and and if you try to calculate the angle uh, then what, what you get is the beam width okay so now what i want to tell you is like from from here okay from here i will, I will take a, another uh, path from here let's say we have got multiple antennas let's say just two antenna then in which case you can use uh, something a uh, power divider pd i will say power divider and you will get uh, two parts and uh, you give both of them to this uh, antenna then in this case actually when you are using uh, uh, this array of antenna here in this case just uh, there are two antennas so uh, your uh, beam width reduces okay compared to this one the beam width is reduced and also uh, it has it will travel for a longer distance because let's say the power is constant okay power is constant then then what happens so since this is uh, squeezed uh, then it will it will actually travel a longer distance so in this case there will be side lobes when there are multiple antenna we will have uh, we will have side lobes so like that <clears throat> i can go for so one more one more like one more power divider let's say this is not just giving me two paths but this is giving me multiple paths corresponding to number of uh, you know number of antennas let's say this is an array of antenna we have got um, many antennas so let's say we have connected uh, these things then we can form a very uh, narrow beam and it can travel for a longer distance okay this is uh, one property and we will have lots of side lobes okay so i hope you got the uh, picture over here so beam width you got it and uh, why when it will become pencil beam and all you got it so another concept which i want to mention over here is uh, so let's say this is the uh, uh, antenna okay so this exact this direction is called bore site and let's say that this is how the beam is present hmm? now uh, let's say i have got uh, two antenna or uh, array of antennas let's say array of antenna so the center one here so from here actually we will have the beam correct and there will be having side lobes now what i want to say here is um, from the bore side which is zero degree uh, with respect to this uh, uh, area of antenna okay if uh, if we want to uh, you know if you want to change the angle of this beam okay let's say i will write it in a different color let's say i want to change the angle of uh, this uh, something like this then the moment it is deviating from the zero degree uh, its beam width slightly increases okay there is a property and we can measure how much it will increase but we will not go to that uh, um, particular uh, um, exact values but we will try to understand it that the beam, beam width slightly increases and also at the same time uh, you know the side lobes uh, uh, are also increased okay this this could be minor this uh, side lobe level will also increase so this is one one more thing which i want to explain and, and also see in the zero degree it would have traveled longer distance right now you see that side lobe levels are increased the moment it goes to the other 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 angle let's say this is uh, um, let's say this is uh, some 50 degree okay then then you know what happens this is tra traveling lesser lesser distance compared to the beam which which traveled uh, in the which traveled uh, in the direction of zero degree okay that is one more uh, thing so what else uh, i can talk about um i hope that much is sufficient uh, for now uh, to talk about uh, the analog beam forming um, we got uh, uh, the concept of uh, pencil beam beam width array of antenna and uh, when side lobe will come and then then if we uh, try to uh, switch the beam to a different angle uh, how would uh, the side lobe level look like and what about uh, the beam width and then you, what about the distance all those things we saw okay with this uh, it is sufficient to, to progress the uh, further concept of the beam forming thank you very much have a great day bye bye if you are looking for more videos please do subscribe to the channel and and uh, and support this channel uh, by sharing with the other people thank you very much